moving nukes through Russia for impending attack? In a national address, Russian President Vladimir Putin has threatened to use nuclear weapons if NATO countries were to join a ground offensive in Ukraine. The suggestion of adding NATO forces to Ukraine was made by France's President Emmanuel Macron, but quickly dismissed by the US, UK and Germany. However, it comes amid calls to show more strength against the Kremlin from Baltic leaders as Russian troops ramp up military operations along land and sea borders in the region. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are now bolstering their civilian armies and have urged other NATO countries, including the UK, to do the same. At such a time, on February the 27th, a self-proclaimed conspiracy theorist named Liz Churchill posted a video on X that appeared to show Russian intercontinental ballistic missile launchers being moved through the streets at night. Churchill's post read, President Putin is moving nuclear weapons. Russia isn't playing games. To NATO and the CIA, you cannot win this. Please surrender. The video was also widely shared by other users on X. Sergei Radchenko, a Russian-born British historian, suggested Putin's quick lurch to nuclear threats suggested Macron had touched a raw nerve. I thought it was interesting that Putin's speech included a direct reference to Macron's recent remark that the use of NATO's troops in Ukraine should not be excluded, he said. His apoplectic reaction to threatening nuclear war suggests that Macron touched a raw nerve. Putin later suggested that the West was being cavalier about the threat Russia poses. The West is trying to drag us into an arms race. They are trying to wear us down, to repeat the trick they succeeded in pulling off with the Soviet Union in the 1980s, Putin said. Estonia plans 600 bunkers to stop Russian invasion in the first hour. On NATO's borders with Russia, frontline states are already preparing for the next war with Moscow. In January, the defense ministers of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia agreed to a new plan to build an extensive network of fortifications intended to deter and defeat the kind of Russian incursion long feared in northeastern Europe. Given their country's 210 miles of border with Russia, much of it considered near impassable thanks to extensive forests and wetlands, Estonian officials said the government is planning some 600 bunkers they hope will prevent a hypothetical invasion and occupation by Moscow. The war in Ukraine has shown that taking back already conquered territories is extremely difficult and comes at great cost of human lives, time and material resources. Susan Lilevali, the Under Secretary for Defence Readiness at the Estonian Defence Ministry, said she spoke about the $64.7 million project during a Thursday briefing with journalists. In addition to equipment, ammunition and manpower, we need physical installations to defend our countries efficiently. Lilevali said the small Baltic states have long been considered the most likely Russian targets should President Vladimir Putin be bold enough to launch an attack on NATO. If successful, Russian units might be expected to overrun the three small nations within days. These installations serve, first, the purpose of avoiding military conflict in our region as they could potentially change the enemy's calculus, Lilevali said. Counter-mobility and fortification measures have played a significant role in wars in our region in history, for example in Finland, and as the war in Ukraine has demonstrated, they are perfectly valid also in this century. She continued, the installations should deny the enemy the possibility to advance rapidly in the territory of Baltic countries and in case of military incursions, stop the enemy's advance already at our borders. Brutality within Russian army in Ukraine now worse than in hell. Although the Russian authorities work overtime to hide it, brutality by officers and soldiers in the Russian invasion force in Ukraine is now so bad that some veterans say things are worse than in hell, the product, they believe, of the entrance of so many former criminals into the ranks and their propensity to follow the moors of Russian streets. U.S. expert Paul Goebel said this. According to him, this is the conclusion of Olesya Gerasimenko of Vertska Media draws on the basis of conversations with veterans, their relatives and their defenders after the last three months of the fighting, and the picture she paints is truly disturbing and a sign that unit cohesion is weakening. The closer Russian forces are to the front lines and the rarer leave has become, 
The more officers and even some soldiers feel they can get away with anything, she says, confident that no military prosecutor will appear and that they therefore have the power to act as they like up to and including torture, rape and murder. According to the investigative journalist, the problem of extrajudicial punishments, bullying and non-regulation relations has intensified. And the longer the forces are on the front lines, the more serious things are becoming. Those with a criminal past are leading the way in applying the rules of the streets, but regular officers aren't far behind, soldiers say. Both groups view those who are weaker than they as somehow less than human and therefore appropriate targets for their anger. Some Russian soldiers are shooting themselves to escape, and others, Gerasimenko says, are surrendering on occasions when there was no need for that, only to escape the hell of service in the Russian military. Music